and these are the video notes for uh, math analysis or uh, pre-calc honors. Section 5.1 we're going to be uh, talking about the fundamental identities. So a lot of these you already know. We already know the reciprocal identities. Uh, we should know the Pythagorean identities at least sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals 1 then you can derive the others. We should know the quotient identities and then these over here maybe you're not as familiar with but uh, make sure that you're learning those as we go. So the first thing that we're going to look at is that we can use trig identities to solve a problem like example one. There's usually other ways to solve these problems and I really don't care which way you solve them as long as you're showing your work so I know how you did do it. So I'm going to solve this first example using my identities. Again, keep in mind it's not the easiest way, but it is one possible way. So we're given that sine x is positive a half, and we know that cosine x is greater than zero, so we know that we're in the first quadrant. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1 and I know what sine of x is so I'm going to substitute that in I have 1 half x or 1 half squared plus cosine squared x is equal to 1 and then 1 half squared is 1 fourth I'm going to subtract that from both sides so I get cosine squared x is equal to 3 fourths and when I take the square root of both sides I get the cosine of x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. And again we could make a triangle and we could figure this out much more quickly but I'm going to just show you how we could use the identities. So now that I have sine and I have cosine I know that tangent of x using my quotient identities is equal to sine x over cosine x so that's going to be 1 half divided by root 3 over 2 which is 1 over root 3 which simplifies to root 3 over 3. Now that I have sine and cosine and tangent I can use my reciprocal identities to find the cosecant of x. It's just going to be the reciprocal of the sine so that's going to be 2 and the secant of x which is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine which is 2 over root 3 which when we rationalize the denominator will be 2 root 3 over 3 and the cotangent is just going to be the reciprocal of the tangent. We can use either of these to do the reciprocal. This one is easier because we won't have to simplify so it's just going to be root 3. So that's how we could use our identities to solve a problem. Normally you'll probably just make a triangle in the first quadrant and figure things out much more easily. All right, so when we're simplifying expressions, sometimes you may not know when you have an answer. So normally it'll come down to just a single expression. Uh, but the, really the only way to get proficient at these problems is to do a lot of practice problems. So I'm going to strongly recommend that you do almost all of the practice problems on the assignment sheet that I recommend. So let's take a look at example two. We want to simplify this expression. So I've got cosine squared x times cosecant x minus cosecant x. So a very important technique is to change things that are not in terms of sine and cosine in terms of sine and cosine. So I've got these cosecants and I'm going to change them into 1 over sine using my reciprocal identities. So then this becomes, so really this is all over the same denominator there now. And I have cosine squared x minus 1 for my numerator because they have a common denominator over sine x. And I'm going to make a little substitution for 1. Again, there's other ways to do this, but I'm just going to show you this way so I know I've got cosine squared x minus and I know 1 is equal to sine squared x plus cosine squared x 
over sine x. Then when I take away the parentheses, I get cosine squared x minus sine squared x minus cosine squared x over sine x. And these are going to cancel out. And I have minus sine squared x over sine squared x, which simplifies to minus sine x. So there we have a single expression. We are simplified. Again, if you have any questions, make sure that you're pausing the video and writing down those questions in the margin so you can ask me the next time you see me in class. Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about verifying identities. I'm going to talk about three methods. The first two are using your calculator, and we're going to use these the least. So for example three part A, if we want to verify the identity numerically using the table feature for your calculator, I don't have a TI calculator handy on my computer here, but what you're going to do, so give this a try and then let me know how it goes, and I'll get your answers the next time I see you in class. You're going to enter this into Y1, and then you want to enter all of this into y2 and then when you look on your table function we've got our x column and you're going to have your y1 and you're going to have your y2 so what you want to do is look at the values in your y1 and y2 columns and see if they're the same if they are the same then you know that you have verified that this is actually an equality, that the sine of 3x is equal to 3 sine x cosine squared x minus sine cubed x. And if they're not, you know that it's not an identity. Okay, so come back when you see me. First thing when we come into class, we'll take a look and decide if this one is an identity or not. So that's the first method using your table. The second method, kind of similar, we're going to plug both of these into our y equals and then we're going to just look at the graph and if we see that one graph traces over the other graph exactly we have an identity so why don't you go ahead and try that as well when you enter cosine cubed x on your calculator the way that you want to do it is to enter cosine x and then raise it to the third. All right, because cosine cubed x really means cosine x times cosine x times cosine x. So make sure that you enter it this way. And same thing for squared. You can just square it using the square button or raise it to the second power either way. All right, so uh, again, pause the video. Take care of this one. Let me know what you think if this appears to be an identity based on the graphs, if the graphs are the same or if they're different. So the third method is to verify the identity algebraically. And this is primarily how we're going to verify our identities. So make sure you don't rely on your calculator because you will have a no calculator exam where the only method that will be available to you is to verify it algebraically. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Common method anytime you have fractions is to combine them. So Again, we have a little trick. I like to call it the smiley face method. So I'm going to multiply up and to the left first. So I have sine theta times 1 minus sine theta. And then since we're subtracting, I'm going to put a minus, and then I'm going to multiply up to the right. Minus cosine squared theta. And then I multiply my denominators. So I have cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta. Alright, so we just subtracted our two fractions. The numerator I'm going to distribute here. So I've got sine theta minus sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta all over, and I'm going to leave this undistributed, cosine theta 1 minus or times 1 minus sine theta. And if we look at the numerator, 
we have an identity for sine squared plus cosine squared. So if I just factor out a negative there, I'll have what I want for that to use my Pythagorean identity. So I have sine theta minus, and then I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, all over cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta. Okay, all of this is going to equal 1. So I've got sine theta minus 1 over cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta. So in the numerator I have sine theta minus 1. On the denominator I have 1 minus sine theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the numerator. So I have negative 1 times 1 minus sine theta. And this is all over cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta. And then these will cancel out. So I can see that I have negative 1 over cosine theta, which is the same as negative secant theta. So this one checks out. All right, again, write down your questions, pause the video, rewind as necessary. Make sure you ask me if you had any trouble. All right, a quick couple of quick examples on uh, factoring trig functions. These really work the same as uh, factoring um, regular algebraic expressions. <coughs> so this would be the same as if I had 1 minus x squared. That would be a difference of two squares, which would be normally be 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Okay, this one here, if it was 2x squared minus 7x plus 6, we could factor that. And then this one over here it would be 4x squared plus x minus 3, and we would factor that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause my video, and you go ahead and work out uh, these examples based on uh, what I have here and see if you can figure out how to factor those. And when you restart the video, we'll have the solutions. So here we have the factoring solutions for these three problems. Uh, go ahead and pause as you need to. I'm going to scroll through these and you can check your answers. Let me know if you have any questions when you see me. And then let's take a look at the last one, example five. We want to write this so that it's not in fractional form. So again, uh, talking about uh, popular techniques that we'll use, sometimes what we'll want to do is multiply by a conjugate. So we'll have one minus sine x and if you remember, a conjugate is the same term, except we use the inverse operation. So here I have minus, so I would multiply by 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. So when I multiply that out, I'm going to get cosine squared x times 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine squared x. And I know that this is the same as cosine squared x, so I have cosine squared x times 1 plus sine x over cosine squared x. These are going to cancel out, and my final answer is 1 plus sine x. So I rewrote the expression not in fractional form. All right, so that's it for this video. Again, make sure that you're asking questions about anything you don't understand. Take the time to pause the video and write down your question or just put a question mark by it so that you remember to uh, get help with it later. And uh, we will see you in the next video.